Okay. Oh, this is exciting. This is a, <laughs> a landmark moment. I made um, Ruth Wilson do it as well. Really? Was she game? Hoi! Was I too enthusiastic? Hoi! Hoi! Today I'm here with Anna James, fellow booktuber and author. So she's the new author, new debut author of Pages & Co. I think to intro the topic of this video, you need to talk a little bit about what the book is about because it's related. Pages & Co is a middle grade book about an 11 year old girl called Matilda Pages and she lives in a bookshop with her grandparents and one day characters from her favourite book start emerging in the bookshop so she meets Alice in Wonderland and Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables and then she realises that she can actually travel inside books with them which is what book wandering is and she realises a whole community around book wandering and also that her grandparents know a lot more about it than they are letting on and then shenanigans ensue <laughs> this is an excellent pitch yeah. very good magical <laughs> shenanigans so we thought we should talk about books about book lovers, yeah. for book lovers, mostly fiction books. Yeah. There's quite a few. We went through our shelves and like yeah. combined a nice stack. We're actually in Anna's home at the moment. I have shelves dedicated to like I have like pretty books about books. Mm -hmm. I have a shelf that's books about writing. Okay, yeah. And then I've got loads of novels that just mixed in with all my novels as well. So it, I presented you with a large stack when you got here. A large stack. Narrowed it down. Yes. So yeah. we've got about ten maybe. And also this is a video I've actually been planning on filming for about two years. So I'm glad we can do it now. Because you can see like a little bit of the stack. We're just mm. gonna start at the top, I think. Great. Which I haven't read. This is one of your ah! This is one of your picks. It is. And I insisted on bringing my Australian edition because I was really extra and like ordered a foreign edition. This is book two in the Old Kingdom trilogy by Garth Nix. I've talked about the Old Kingdom trilogy so many times. But sometimes I feel like I haven't talked enough about like what's in it. Book two takes place partly in a massive magical library that's underground in these, I think, glaciers? It's been a while since I've read it. Lyriel, the main character, basically starts out as a, she's like an apprentice librarian, like a oh, beginning librarian. Goodness. And she also gets up to all kinds of shenanigans. I didn't, and, know, I didn't know it was so booky. And she opens like doors she shouldn't open, finds monsters she shouldn't Amazing. find, learns this magic that she shouldn't have access to, which gives her like extra access to the library. It's a really dangerous library. and. I don't think she talks loads about like fiction and reading, but it's more the setting of that massive library. The, I think it's called the Library of the Clare. So good. And then she goes out. She goes out and has adventures as well. But that setting is just Amazing. like such a vivid picture. And that reminds me as well of one I didn't pick just because it's so famous. Yeah. The, the Shadow of the Wind. I haven't read that. <gasps> Set in a bookshop and then this the cemetery of forgotten books. So you haven't that read that sold it to me. I thought it was kind of like I I didn't know it had. I mean, a there was a lot of setting. magic. There's zombies. Yeah. There's creatures. But I think the way Garth Nix writes, I just love it so much. And it, even though they're like quite big books, you just start and you just don't put it down. I actually definitely wanted to read them for forever. So. Yeah, maybe we should read them. I'll read them at the same time. Okay. Just so good. Speaking of magical libraries. This book is a bit of a <laughs> wild card. A wild card. And it's one of those books that I read ages ago and I read it before I worked in books and I'm nervous to reread it in mm -hmm. case I don't love it as much as I think I love it. <laughs> now I'm a slightly more critical reader perhaps. But I think I would. And it's it's The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Moers. Moers? Huh? It's, it's translated. Really good end papers, really good illustrations, really bizarre illustrations yes. as well. So it's translated from the German. Uh, <laughs> the German. <laughs> Translated from the German. Got like... It looks kind of like a German book. Yeah. Like yes. the illustrations do. It's got a lot of <gasps> like, kind of... I think yeah. you should show okay. it. So there's like... <laughs> it's like a creature, some sort of yeah. like eight-legged creature on spines. It's just, it's full of really quirky illustrations. It's it's full fantasy. What's the setup of it? Okay. Basically about these like, kind of little monstery. Okay. It's like about this young monster who travels to this big city mm -hmm. in search of fame and fortune. He finds out some secrets about okay. books and libraries. He ends up trapped in this underground library yeah. and he is finding out if something he's been told about it is real. I found it quite scary when I was reading it, but I have a super low tolerance What age were you when you read it? Oh, I was an adult. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, no, I just studied really very bad with scary things. Okay, next one's one that we've both read. Yay. The Hazelwood. Yes. By Melissa Albert. Also, a much more recent one. Yes, very recent. So it's a YA one. Setup of this. 
has a little, little bit in common with. Yes. Do you know what? Actually, I read that when I was reading it, I was. And you had the fear. Bit, I, was, I had the fear because <laughs> as soon as you write a book, you suddenly start finding all these books that are similar concepts yeah, yeah, yeah. that you've never heard of when you'd written it. But so this is the story of Alice. She's been on the run. I've done this pitch so much for work. Yeah, okay. Story of Alice. She's on the run with her mom. She doesn't know who her dad is. There's this something, this thing that's like chasing mm -hmm. them, but she doesn't really know what. She got kidnapped when she was a kid, but then she got returned again. And she doesn't really know what's up with that and her grandmother wrote this like cult dark fairy tale mm -hmm. book that she actually hasn't been able to get her hands on like there's she like hasn't read it copies available. but there's a massive fandom around it and then one day her mom disappears and there's a letter left for Alice saying I can't remember what it is. Don't go, don't go don't to the Hazelwood. Hazel don't go to the like Hazelwood. Yeah. Um, but this also involves obviously these fairy tales and finding out about these fairy tales and then her potentially jumping into a fictional world. Yeah. Is that too much of a spoiler? I really, really love the characters in this book. I really love the writing. I wasn't too keen on the ending because I think it yeah. goes a bit wild. Yeah. Because it's easy I to get- I experience. I think it's easy when you like start like messing with reality and mm -hmm. stuff. It's easy to get a bit confused as a reader. So yeah. I think, I wish the ending was slightly different, but I, yes. I loved this character. So, like the setup and the concept and the writing. Yeah. I loved, I, like I loved a lot about also, it. Also, I would watch this TV show. So hard, yeah. yeah. And I'm also going to just mention, if you liked this, The Book of Lost Things, there's a similar sort of idea of a boy and fairy tales and family secrets. It's set during the First or Second World War. Okay. This is definitely an adult book, though. It's quite, it's very dark. Although this is very dark. This is so. really dark. Yeah, if you yeah. like this, um, I would recommend this very much. Should we do some wholesome content? As in Matilda. Yeah. Okay. Has to be done. Yes. Matilda. Namesake of your book character. Yes, but she is, that's who she's named after yeah. because so in the book, anything that's out of copyright, I can use as I like. Oh, I so see. So that's part of the reason she's Alice in Wonderland, and Green Gables, they're out of copyright, so I can use the characters and the settings, and I don't have to yeah. get permission or anything. I see. Matilda would be, have been such a fun book to play with, but it's in copyright, so yeah. my ode to it is to name the main character. after Matilda. Oh, so that's so why cute. she's called Matilda. I read this book when I was young, because I read all the Alf Roald Dahl's books in Dutch. Um, and I was given one for my birthday. This is actually a really terrible story. I was probably like nine or ten. I was given Matilda for my birthday. And I like, I remember being under like my dad's chair, right. like, reading the book. And by the end of my birthday, like when the family had left, I was like, I finished it now. Can we go trade it for another one? And I think we went and like exchanged it for a different book. Really? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Which is really terrible. Like now I don't have... Home, Matilda would approve. And now I don't have a childhood copy of uh... Matilda because we exchanged it for probably like... BFG or like one that I hadn't yeah, read I have very very few copies of my childhood books because we got them all from the library because yeah. I read too much to sustain <laughs> my parents buying them. Have you reread well. this recently? No. I have and it's Does it still very it? good. Okay. It's always so a little bit of a... So the film so nice. Yeah you, and the music, I'm using the musical. Yeah. It's one of my favourite things on. Yeah. But yeah obviously Matilda for anyone who hasn't read it, um, Roald Dahl, she's a massive book nerd, can read from the age of what? three or yeah, something, something like that, yeah. goes to the library by herself with her little cart. All about reading. So I think yeah. this is the first, when you say books, books about, about book books. lovers, this is, this is the one. Yeah. I've got another wild card. Okay. So this is a non-fiction book and I stumbled across this in foils when I was just killing time there. And you know, when you're just like wandering and yeah. you just browse. That's when you find all the books you want. And I just stumbled across this, which I think is an American import, oh. actually. What we see when we read by Peter Mendelssohn. And it's- That the, name sounds really familiar. So good. I think he's a book designer in America. That's his oh, job. Oh, okay. So it's a really like, um, how, how's the best way to like- I mean, Yeah, hold like, it up. Just, it's like a really cool, it's got loads of illustrations and black pages. Yeah, and, quite yeah about it's it. so good. And it's about what it says. It's about what we see when we read and it's about how our brains turn what we read into pictures. Ooh. And like the thing like, if you think about a favorite character and the way, the more you think about what they, you would think, you think you have a picture in your yeah. head. And, and the more you try and on focus it. on it, you, it goes really fuzzy. And just That's it's really cool. the, way, the way that works. But it's written in a really, it's not like, it's, it's got a little bit of science in it. Yeah. But it's, but it's a really like quick, readable. fun, quirky read and I really if you are into books it's a must read and you can read in like an hour. Jane Eyre, a fave. I today interviewed Ruth Wilson who's the actress who is in my favourite Jane Eyre adaptation and I tried to be cool but I wasn't. I was trying to remember how much 
Jane reads. I think a lot of it is in the beginning when she's like a yeah. kid and she's looking through those big yep. books, like imagining she's in in different worlds. She definitely has um, a bookish vibe. Yeah, and I, yeah, it's one of the weird ones because I was I was brainstorming this before and I was like, oh, Pride and Prejudice maybe or Jane Eyre. But yeah, for me, like somehow that is the one that comes to mind for me. I think Northanger Abbey would have been a good one as well, but I haven't no, read it. I haven't read it. So it's I think in that I she read. reads a lot of books. Yeah, she's, um, she's like fantasizes. Like the gothic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really need to read that for yeah. Halloween. Okay, well, that I haven't read that one. Let's do this one. Okay, so this is The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett, which this is, is really, a weird one. really small. It's a tiny, it's a novella, really. It will, again, another one you can read really quickly. Um, this is about the queen who is going <laughs> for an unchaperoned walk and she stumbles across a mobile library outside of Buckingham Palace. And it's set over a really, like a, just a week, I think, that mm -hmm. the library is outside Buckingham Palace and it's about her going and choosing books and talking to the librarian there. And it's like a little, the I queen's little concept. literary odyssey. And it's like a little bubble, like imagining, I kind of like those like what if stories about real yeah, people, yeah, yeah. like what if there was a week that the Queen used a mobile library. I love that. And it's just about that. And it's... And quick it's, read. It's quick and it's charming and it's funny and it's celebration of libraries as well. This is just going to start like piling yeah. up until it covers In us. front of us. Yes. Because I haven't read this and we'll save these ones. You haven't read this one? No. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'll do the pitch in <laughs> yeah, that case. I know. I feel like it's one that... I don't know why I have I haven't read, read any of her stuff. I haven't oh, read any of her stuff. I haven't read everything books, else. So, okay, there we go. <laughs> That's fine. We'll compliment each other. So, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell is a book about two twins, uh, they go off to university in the US and they've always done everything together. They wrote this fan fiction together, which is basically based off of Harry Potter, but it's not called Harry Potter in this book. It's called like Simon, I can't remember what it's called, but um, they wrote this fan fiction together, they've done everything together, and then the sister says, I would actually prefer to be in a different dorm. Like, I don't want us to be roommates. Right, okay. And the main character is called Kath, and she really doesn't deal with that very mm -hmm. well. Um, she's used to, like, being in her own world and writing fan fiction, and this is about her coming out of her shell. Okay. I love the characters. I love the dad. I love the roommate. There's, like, a guy in there as well who's okay. very cute. Um, <laughs> and it's also her trying to come to terms with, like, writing fan fiction versus writing essays and okay. doing um, creative writing and right. her teachers are not on board with I fan fiction. There's some little chapters in there that are the fan fiction which a lot of people who read this book skip. Oh. Because they don't like it. A lot of people really really don't like the that's fan fiction interesting. bits. Yeah. That's interesting. I need to read it. Does yours also have the cute illustration? It does! Oh. It's got all the characters in the front and that's super cute. I love this book. I use it as an example very often when people are like, I want to read some more and I don't know what to read. Oh, I think it's really okay. nice. Cool. And I also really relate to this character sometimes. Okay. As she's like, doesn't like going to new places by herself, like shops and coffee shops and things yeah. like that. Uh, I read a scene she's like, I can't go to the cafeteria because I've never been by myself and now it's too late because everyone it's gotten used and like this is that's me. Speaking of YA, um, our penultimate book is Bookshop Girl by Chloe Coles, which has just recently come out. This is so funny. I, I know that like, this is a big statement, mm -hmm. but it reminded me of Louise Renison, the Georgia Nicholson books that I haven't Thompson. read those. I'm sorry, I didn't read those. When did you? So up, I read a lot of Dutch fiction. I was going to say growing up, and like some translated ones. <laughs> depend on it really depended on what my local library had and what had been translated. I'm sure it was translated, yeah. but I mostly just read like action adventures okay. and fantasy when I was younger. Yeah. Which actually I did mainly, and these books just they just summed up like okay. being a teenage girl in the UK. Okay. I think it's a very particular style of humor, and this just really it's kind of like Louise. Renison meets Hollyborne. Okay. Because it's also really feminist. Okay. And it's about a teenage girl who works in the bookshop in her kind of a run town. down town, yeah. And they get told that it's closing, this branch is closing. Mm -hmm. And it's her sort of fight to keep it open. So it's about bookshops and friendship and feminism and activism. It's also just really funny. Like it's I think it's so hard to write genuinely laugh out loud fiction and it oh, actually so. made me laugh out loud. I think we've long needed a sort of UK. Oh, it's like a hockey new... one as well. Yeah. I forgot about that. And it only just came out, but the second one is out imminently as well. All right. So contains books, protest, <laughs>, laughs, and a fitty. Yeah, that sums it up pretty well. A hottie. Okay. All right. Our last, last one. choice. Couldn't you miss this one out. Recognize, <laughs> and it's the bookshop book by Jen Campbell. It's a book about bookshops around the world. Yes. 
Um, has some beautiful like full color pictures in the middle. Yes. I love the cover as well. Yeah, so there's like photos of I wonder, beautiful I wonder how many, how many do you think you've been to? Not that many. Not that many. Do you go to bookshops abroad a lot? Um, I mean like if I'm abroad I will, but I, um, not like massively. It's a nice one to just sit down and read for 10 minutes. Also has my favorite dedication ever, which oh. every time, have you, do you know the dedication? I, not, I Hold on. Books are Time Machines, Spaceships, Story Makers, Secret Keepers, Dragon Tamers, Dream Catchers, Fact Finders, and Safe Places. That's Which lovely. I, love. I loved the location in your book where they go to the British Library and they go to the secret library underneath <gasps> the British Library. Oh, yeah. Everyone always goes to the British Library. And yeah. like, I haven't properly been to the British right. Library to go, like I've been to the exhibits that they right. have, but I haven't been to like- Because I write a lot in the yeah. reading rooms there. And that's why when I needed a location for a secret magical library, I was like- oh. I'm already there, perfect. Yeah. So there's an apparently out of order lift in the British Library. I think that's it. Yeah. So if you love books about books, about books, these are the ones to check out. These yeah. are our recommendations. So make sure to check out Pages and Co, link to it, and all the other books we've mentioned will be in the description. I'll put your channel in the description nice. as well. I promise I will make some more videos soon. Just complain in the comments no, and tell her to make some more. Me. What are you doing to me? Anna makes really lovely videos that are like stop motion from the top of the They take nice, so long to make. That's the nice problem. items and like reviewing books. We're filming another video which yes. will come out in like maybe a few weeks. I don't know when. On we'll another come out of yet. our favourite subjects. Yes, which is cults. So coming soon. Doey! Doey.